Hello, everybody. Uh, well, today it's kind of an exciting day for me because I get to uh, talk about something that I didn't have to pay for. Uh, Inventables has decided to enable me by giving me free stuff, uh, and basically the only stipulation is that I have to make a project or a video reviewing it, and this first thing that they gave me is a solid state relay, so I'm going to make a project out of it. So basically this relay is just a solid state relay. It's capable of handling like 25 amps. It's really, really beefy. Um, but I'm going to use it to make a setup to run my shop vac automatically. So when I hit go, the shop vac and the spindle and everything, you know, starts up all at once. I don't have to mess around with remembering to turn it on. Probably not the, you know, most amazing thing, but it's, you know, hey, I, I don't have very many other things to mod on my machine. And I, my spindle turns on when I hit go, so why not, you know, have my shop vac turn on as well. I'm pretty excited about doing this, so let's get going. All right, so I've got some things assembled for this project. Of course, I've got the relay, and I have an out, a 110 outlet, and the box for the outlet and the plate. I've got some two conductor wire that will be used to connect uh, from the control box to the relay. Then I have a gutted ATX power supply chassis. Basically, it's completely emptied except for just a switch on the back and the power connector. And so electricity is going to be able to travel in uh, through that connector and then to the relay and then to the power outlet. Uh, so basically, ha it also has the ability to have a manual off switch. So really, the first step is to just use the Dremel to chop down this outlet enclosure. Uh, it's going to technically not be as safe, I guess, but there's just not enough room to have the whole thing in there. And the real purpose of it is to just be able to have something solid to uh, mount the electrical outlet uh, to. And since this is what it's designed for, it makes sense to use it. Uh, so we're just going to chop off enough of it so that the relay and the remaining part of this enclosure can comfortably fit inside of the power supply chassis. All right, as you can see, I've kind of got it mounted in. I uh, still got to cut out the hole right here. Eh, shouldn't take too much, I don't think. Not quite sure if I need it, this uh, box on the outside or on the inside of the steel, so I'm going to have to muss around with that a little bit. But as you can see, everything fits in fairly well. So pretty happy with it right now, and let's continue on, I guess. All right, so... As you can tell, I really love the Dremel. Unfortunately, using the Dremel to cut steel uh, is a little bit uh, trickier and a bit more difficult than uh, cutting plastic, but it still works really well with these kinds of uh, multi-purpose, you know, cut-off discs. One thing I didn't, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but the outlet box needed to be, uh, or needs to be on the outside of the ATX power supply chassis. And this initial cut that I'm showing actually is, I'm thinking about it being on the inside like this. Uh, and that ends up being a problem because I cut out an area and it mucks up the, the box a little bit. Not too bad. Kind of one of those lessons that I've learned a long time ago that if you're going to kind of noodle your way through fabrication and not actually measure stuff uh, it's best to make your first cut you know conservative because you know more often than not you will be cutting twice since you didn't measure twice uh, so if you're going to cut twice you better make sure that your first cut is conservative uh, and which is exactly what I did here so right as I mentioned I now have it on the, the more or less the right way um, as you can see uh, the tabs are Basically, the drywall tabs are holding it in place now. Uh, as you can see, that one's going to have to be cut off, I think. But, yeah, pretty simple, basic thing. That one is definitely going to have to get cut off. Dremel should do that just fine. Um, but it's pretty solid. Pretty happy with it. Uh, there is the span there, but there wasn't a span there uh, anyways because there was a, a spot missing uh, to allow cabling to go through to the, you know, for all the PC wiring. So, and once it's all bolted down uh, with the top part, it should be no problem. <laughs> yeah. And you can see where I melted down some of the plastic of the outlet enclosure just because of stupidity. Um, but no big deal. 
Okay, so I've opted to mount the solid state relay from Inventables down to the chassis by using some M5 um, screws and which you can see right there on the bottom. They're kind of recessed ones. And then just some lock nuts and a washer on either side. So it's just using the you know bracket mount point on the heat sink of this solid state relay. Uh, it seems like it's turning out pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy with it, so let's move on. Well, now we're about completely done on the wiring. Uh, power is basically just coming through the PC connector there uh, and then running through the neutral uh, wires, running through the switch and then going to the outlet. And then the live wire is running through the relay and then to the outlet switch. So you basically, when powers, uh, when the relay is powered up, that then allows uh, electricity to flow through the other side of the relay, and then it goes through and gives you full uh, AC on the outlet. Uh, I believe I still need to get a ground wired up, but that's about the only thing I believe that's left on the wiring, and then I just got to button it up, and then I can pretty much just test it. So let's do that. Well, the ground's all wired up now, so as you can see, it's just hooked up to this grounding uh, stud that was part of the chassis, and then it's just got a wire running from that to the outlet, so the chassis is grounded out and everything, and then we've got this, I think this is from an old cell phone, it's a it's USB like 5 volt, so it'll act as our mock, uh, you know, on signal to the relay, and it should give us a red light when it's turned on, or when it's powered up, so... This is just making sure everything works properly before we plug in high voltage. All right, so let's give this a shot and see what happens. And as you can see, there's a red light, so that's good. So we obviously know that the relay is functioning and seems to be fine. Oh, there's one thing. I forgot about this. Uh, there's actually this um, little protective shield that you can put or that comes with the relay and it's basically there is extra protection all right so we got everything uh hooked up we have power or 110 power hooked up through the pc cord connector we have the switch on uh so basically we just are going to connect our five volt power to power <laughs> As you can see, it takes a little bit of a, uh, like a little delay before it actually uh, turns off completely. But uh, it, other than that, it works really, really well. Um, also, if I want to use this kill switch, I can leave that plugged in for right now. Uh, the idea of there being, say, for instance, I'm milling aluminum and I don't need the vacuum cleaner. Uh, I don't have to, you know, basically unplug something or mess around with software for the job, I can just simply hit that switch and I won't have any vacuum uh, mussing around with anything. So very excited about how it's all worked out so far. So now the next step basically uh, in this whole uh, thing is to replace this power supply, this five volt power supply with a five volt signal coming from uh, my Linux CNC um, you know, set up. Basically, I need to send a 5 volt signal from my parallel port breakout board. Uh, once I do that, everything should be running perfect. All right, quick little bit before I button this up for the last time. As you can see, I've replaced that uh, little power supply wires with wire that's going to be connected up to the to the computer. Um, basically, I just used a zip tie and kind of looped it around the zip tie to give a, a little bit of pressure relief. Um, and on the other side, I've got another little zip tie right there, so it can't move around and wear out. All right, so I've got everything wired up now, and it seems like it's working pretty good. So you can see right there, uh, we have the box, uh, the relay box uh, enclosure mounted to the wall. Um, it's wired up to the my breakout board inside my uh, control box, which is opened up right now. You have Linux CNC fired up right now. And basically, vacuum cleaner and the spindle and everything's ready to go. So let's get this queued up so you can see kind of what's happening on the screen. And you'll obviously be able to hear the vacuum and everything go once we fire it up. So all I'm going to do is hit 
the start button on this job which basically is just the uh, Linux CNC logo and you should hear the vacuum fire up first actually because uh, the super pid kind of takes a little bit of time to spin up so So there you go. Just ran it kind of in the air just for that. But basically, as you can tell, uh, just hitting the escape key uh, cancels out the job and turns off both the spindle and, you know, the vacuum cleaner and everything. So, yeah, it's really working really good. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I apologize for the lazy screen grab here with the camera. I should have probably used some software, but I've had some bad luck in the past trying to mess around with Linux software. Uh, for doing that and I just haven't really worked on it but anyways this line right here at line 35 is the line that basically makes the or turns on the relay and subsequently the vacuum within the software so what I'm doing here is I'm basically making Linux CNC think that there's a spindle on point on the parallel port 0 on pin 1 and if you look down the list you can see on line 50 there's another line that looks identical and that's actually the line for at line 50 for the super pid turning it on and off so it's basically thinking that it's turning on the spindle with that with both of them uh, I really don't know if that's technically a no-no but it seems to work with no problem whatsoever so I'm going to continue using it until somebody yells at me I guess or I run into a problem now for everybody that's out there watching this video that is like ah that's really cool but I'm using the G shield or I'm using tiny G you know I don't have Linux CNC and is this a project that I can actually do on my setup yeah I think you can um, both the G shield and tiny G I believe have the ability to uh, hook up a relay and turn on and off uh, that kind of stuff within the software um, it's going to be slightly different obviously but I'm pretty sure that you can do it I, this isn't something that's just limited to turning on and off at a vacuum. This would turn on and off anything. If I didn't have a super PID, I could easily, since this has two outlets, I could plug in my DW660 on the other plug and turn on and off my DW660 and my vacuum at the same time from this box. So, you know, it's it's got a lot of versatility, I think. And I guess I should probably take a moment to thank Inventables one more time. They're an awesome company. And with that, I suppose it's about time to wrap up this video. So if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like the video. And if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps me out immensely by basically just telling me how popular any video is. So thanks for watching and bye.